Hello, um, just a quick warning, this video has some spoilers for House of the Dragon Season 1. Anyways. So, about a month or two ago, I made a video trying to get better at art by stealing from Baroque paintings. You know, the compositional elements, lighting choices, colour palettes, as well as the thematic and narrative decisions. But looking back at the paintings I made for that video, I kinda just picked out a few good references and painted it darker with stronger contrast, which, yeah, it's probably one of the more important parts, but I feel like I could have done a lot more to work on other aspects mentioned. So for this piece, I'm gonna get out of my comfort zone a bit and work on other areas like the composition and the narrative decisions. And I also want to go through my process in a little bit more detail. On the screen right now is how the piece looks finished, and I'll be talking you through how I got to this point. Alright, planning. So for this piece, I am taking pretty heavy inspiration from The Taking of Christ by Caravaggio. Caravaggio is just the most obvious inspiration to me when it comes to Baroque art, and even though this isn't necessarily my favourite piece of his, it's, um, it's Narcissus in case anyone was wondering, even though this isn't my favourite piece, I think this is one of the most well-executed paintings in the Baroque style, and there's just so much to learn from it. As is pretty usual of his work, the dramatic unidirectional lighting is impeccable. The movement of the scene and the lighting gradient both work together so well to funnel our eyes towards Jesus and Judas making out, and the crowd density and the dramatic composition make the painting sit so perfectly within the frame. It's just... it's a really good painting. Caravaggio is um, a good painter. Subscribe for more art history hot takes. Anyways, for the subject, I want to choose a scene that portrays a peak of narrative tension and contains a lot of movement and action with which I could hopefully build a really dramatic composition. Caravaggio normally picks out a scene from the Bible, but well, <laughs> I, I don't want to do that. So in the end, I went with a scene from episode 7 of House of the Dragon. It's been my favorite show this whole year. In this scene, Rhaenyra is fighting with Alicent to protect her son Luke. These two were once best friends until Rhaenyra's father, the king, married Alicent and then had a bunch of small humans with her. Tension would further build between the two when Alicent's father Otto schemes to replace Rhaenyra's heir with his new grandson Aegon. Just before the scene starts, Luke and Alicent's other son Aemon got into a fight and Aemon walks away from the fight blinded in one eye. And in a fit of anger or some weird sense of justice involving revenge against a child, Alison tries to cut out Luke's eye. So to me, this scene fits all the criteria. It has the drama, the movement, the violence, and of course the cherry on top, Alison and Rhaenyra's past sapphic friendship. After all, this painting is inspired by Caravaggio. In terms of composition, obviously Rhaenyra and Alison are going to be the focal point of this piece, so I started with those two in mind. I've decided to place their faces on the top left hand corner, and I'm going to try my best to direct your eyes towards that using the rest of the composition. To fill out the rest of the scene, I've gone with three other people. While planning this, initially I had Otto, Kristen, and Damon as their supporting cast, but as you can see from the final piece, I decided against Damon later on because he ended up being too distracting. And after binging the whole season to pick out references, these were the ones I landed on. For this painting, because the poses I wanted are kind of specific, I only looked for references for their faces. They're decently well-known characters, and I wanted them to be recognisable. The rest of the body, however, I kinda just painted by vibes. As you've already seen earlier, after sketching them out, I started by blocking in the highlights and shadows to help me visualise the 3D shapes early on and also it's just really useful in helping me check the general composition of the image before rendering in detail. Obviously, because this is digital, I can always move things around and liquefy constantly, which I did quite often, but having a good start position is still very helpful. Then I started with the background characters. I figured they were less important, and also I was gonna push them back with shadows anyways, so starting there will help me not more too much at the beginning of the project, and also painting metals is kinda easy for me. I got Kristen's face to a level I was happy with, then I started working on Damon, until I decided that he just looked way too edgy, and his white hair was too distracting, so I ended up deciding against his inclusion. I think it worked out for the better anyways, because it does make Rhaenyra feel so much more alone in this painting, 
which is very thematic for what's going on in this episode. Alright, next I started working on the two girl bosses or girl failures depending on who you support. I've got two very good references for this with the only issue being the lighting is kind of in the wrong direction for what I wanted, especially when it comes to Rhaenyra but that is a pretty solvable issue. Caravaggio has this tendency to paint women kind of um, a little on the dainty side, a habit that's really highlighted in comparison with how emotive he usually paints his men and even further highlighted compared to the works of someone like Gentileschi, who is much less afraid to show the same range of emotion Caravaggio normally reserves for men. Caravaggio's Judith feels icky about beheading someone, whereas Gentileschi's is a lot more... Brah. I don't fucking know how to describe it. So for my painting, I try to pick more emotive faces to paint, preferably ones where they don't necessarily look so perfect, but HBO did cast Olivia Cook and Emma Darcy for these roles, so you know, I I'm just saying, I can only wish to look half this pretty if I ever try to carve out a child's eye. Regardless, hopefully I can paint them looking angry enough, but you know, if I failed, I'm just taking a page from Caravaggio, and if I succeed, it's also intentional, but now I'm copying Gentileschi. Don't question it. So yeah, I um, <laughs> kind of suck at portraits. I like to tell myself I can do them, but um, usually at the cost of a lot of molding, which is still true I think, but I'm really hoping that I'm working my way towards fixing that skill issue. For this piece in particular, I chose a very odd angle for Rhaenyra, which made it difficult, but through measuring constantly and eventually gritting plus the liquify tool, eventually I managed to make her somewhat recognizable. Again, the lighting in the reference is at a wrong angle, but through the power of imagining 3D shapes in your head, I was able to resolve that issue. And after Rhaenyra's face was done, the hardest part of the painting was pretty much over. Kinda. After finishing the faces, I got working on the pose. This was a lot easier in a certain sense because it's less obvious when something is wrong, but the lack of reference is a little bit of an annoyance. But you know, with good use of Google Images or just like taking pictures of yourself, workarounds do exist, they're just not perfect. Caravaggio always paints his shit with a low homoerotic overtones, especially if Jesus is involved for some reason. So I wanted these two to hold hands to pay homage to that aspect of his paintings. These two are a little sapphic in the show anyways, especially in the earlier episodes, so the handholding came pretty naturally. The hands and the dagger were really fun to paint, I love painting metallics, and other than faces, I think the dagger serves as a really good secondary focal point. And it also just gives me an excuse to paint the gold like gold as fuck, which makes my brain really happy. And then after painting all that, I started working on the hair. Now, usually you aren't meant to paint individual strands, which I had some moderate success on with Alison, but Rhaenyra is titanium blonde, so I ended up painting them one by one because, well, <laughs> apparently I hate myself. Painting the clothes also sucked. Um, they have so many folds and my brain has none, so at least for fabric that I'm not familiar with, I just can't really wrap my head around it too easily. Which was the case for pretty much most of this piece. I must have done Alison's sleeve like 200 times. But eventually, when I was happy with her dress, I realized Otto was gonna cover up all the best parts. Amazing. Otto was also a challenge. I didn't want him to have the exact same pose as Alison, but also I didn't really give myself that many options. I knew that I wanted him to have his back turned towards the viewer. I think having him and the other two people flanking Rhaenyra and Alison is pretty neat. It makes a little frame within the frame in the painting, like in Caravaggio's Taking of Christ and um, I guess a lot of his other paintings. What I didn't really want to do though is have him approach them from the direction of the audience. I feel like too much perspective would break the fourth wall a little bit too much, which can certainly be effective in certain paintings, but Baroque paintings are just so dramatic and theatrical that composing it as a scene within another plane just works a lot better in my opinion. So what I ended up doing is compromising on the similar pose thing. I had Otto's arm mirror Alison's, but his back is a little bit more turned towards us. It ended up being probably the most awkward part of the painting, but I'm probably just overthinking it. 
I also ended up brightening the shoulders so that there is a clearer diagonal of values to lead your eyes towards the focal point more efficiently. Then I readjusted Alison's sleeve one last time to go with Otto's new hand position. Shit just fucking hates me. <laughs> then I touched up and darkened Kristen a little bit to push him further into the background. I worked more on his armor and gave him a sword. It's a lot brighter than the surrounding area because I wanted it to temporarily catch your attention as you scan the painting. And hopefully it also adds another sense of looming danger to the scene. I, I don't know, it seemed fun. Anyways, after that I added Sir um, Westerling to the scene. He seemed like a good inclusion at the time. Damon just wasn't working out and I didn't want to paint hair, so that's who I went with. I painted his face pretty quickly. At this point, I was kind of bored of this painting and wanted it done, so I rushed it along a bit. And then I added a hand by Rhaenyra's side as a little easter egg to Lyceris, and also a sixth character to make it feel even more crowded. And with that done, the painting is finally finished. But if you'll entertain my yapping, here are some closing thoughts. This painting was really fucking difficult to make. In terms of how happy I am with it, I think there's a lot of things I would change and a lot of early planning mistakes I wish I hadn't made. And obviously because I am taking heavy inspiration from a Caravaggio, it's naturally going to feel inadequate in comparison. But in my defense, he did begin chart labor at 6. Jokes aside though, this is probably still one of the best paintings I've ever made, so I won't mold over it too much. Overall, I'm decently happy with how it turned out. Caravaggio's tenorism and the resulting broke art style has been my favorite since I was 10. Seeing Narcissus was probably what made me think of art as more than just a way to create cool pictures. Baroque art is the style I'm most exposed to, but knowing the elements that go into it and being able to recognize them in a completed painting is still quite different from trying to piece it together to create a new composition on your own. And that's been quite a fun thing to try out and learn from. Yeah, I mean, I think the painting is quite alright. I don't hate it that much, and I learned a lot from painting it. So, um, Thank you so much for sticking to the end, uh, like and subscribe and such, uh, bye bye!